Okay, now we're going to look at using Coulomb's law to find the net force in two dimensions. So instead of being in a straight line, we've put our three charges in a triangle. So the moment we've got a triangle, they are vectors, we're going to use Pythagoras and trigonometry to calculate the net force. Okay, so we're supposed to only have right angle triangles, but remember if you can bisect an isosceles triangle into two right angle triangles, so sometimes you might end up with an isosceles um, triangle situation. So what happens here? You can look at this from any of these things, but they usually ask you for this uh, corner of the triangle, the one at the right angle corner. So if they want you to find what happens to S, you can work out the force of R on S and the force of P on S, and then you can end up drawing a vector diagram from that. So let's go ahead and have a look at how this works, okay? So here are your three forces. We want to find out what is the net force on S here, okay? So first of all, we find out what is the force of R on S. You can see these are opposite charges, so there's going to be attraction. At the end of the day, we're going to write attraction. So the force R on S is K, the charge on R, the charge on S over the distance between them squared, which is R2 here, 60 mil. So change everything from the micro coulombs into proper coulombs by 10 to the minus 6. Change your millimeters into meters. So SI units in the formula, this from the data sheet, square the bottom, square everything in the bracket, put it all in your calculator, and you'll find the magnitude of the force is 120 newtons. So S is attracted to the left towards R with 120 newtons force. Now if we look at these two, what's happening with P and S? We write our formula again. Make sure that you've indicated in these two calculations. Here is my force R on S. Here is my force P on S. You don't have to write a subscript. You can title your calculation on top here. Force P on S and then do the calculation. So just keep them straight in your mind and so it's easy for the marker as well. So substitute everything, making your units SI units, and then you find by putting this all in your calculator, you've got 320 newtons. S wants to go to P because look, plus, minus, S wants to go to P. There's a 320 newton force attraction upwards. So if we have a look at this, what is going on with S if we make a vector diagram? There's a 120 newton force. S wants to go 120 newtons left, but S also wants to go 320 newtons up. So now we have to find the net force, okay? So look over here first, focus your attention here. If you're looking at S and there's, imagine two strings pulling S, where will S go? It won't go left, it won't go right, it will go up at an angle and that angle will be theta. So the net force is going this way at an angle theta. So how are we gonna calculate this? We want to turn our vectors head to tail. So I'm going to pick up this 320 newton force and so say S will go 120 newtons left, 320 newtons up. So all I've done is picked up this vector so I can see a nice right angle triangle, okay? And here is my theta and you can see the net force is very clearly the resultant of of the forces and it's the hypotenuse of the triangle. So in order to find the value of the hypotenuse of the triangle, we're going to use um, Pythagoras. So that's going to give me the magnitude of the force. So here it's shorthand, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So c equals the root of a squared plus b squared here. Yes, you're all fine with this. So it's 320 squared plus 120 squared all rooted. You get 341,76 newtons. This is the magnitude of the force. It is a force. It has a magnitude and a direction. So now how will we find the direction? Okay. We're going to say tan is opposite over adjacent. So 320 over 120. Fiddle with your calculator. You're going to get 69,44 degrees. So your final answer has to state the net force is 341,76 newtons and this is at 69,44 degrees to the force R on S. Can you see this force here is R in the beginning diagram? Look here was R, here's S. So this net force 
would be effectively above the horizontal but they don't ever tell you where these things are so you have to say state this angle relative to one of the other angles remember you can have also done this the other way and then you can have stated this this other theta here if you did it vertically instead of horizontally but me I always like my triangles to look like this so I always end up with an angle from the horizontal which in this case is not the horizontal but the force R on S based on how I've drawn my triangle and that is where we will end here